So we're out here with Slay for logging. We've got this big pickle of a redwood right here. Anton's gonna drop it. He's gonna walk us through how to do a traditional style Humboldt. So you've seen the Humboldts before, you know, they come in at an angle and this one is a little bit different. This tree leans out this way, but there's a huge belly because of this skid road. And then we just fell a first snag to get it out of the way of this, but there's another road up there and it would have broken this tree in multiple pieces and redwood isn't a tree that will take a belly at all. And so we had to change, we had to pick our best lay. Our best lay is up here. There's multiple stumps and you're still gonna cross two roads, but the hump in front of this side of the road and the hump between the two roads will probably act as a layout if I hit my lay and um, should save out better. I do believe this tree's gonna break, but it should save out better falling it that way versus falling it here. So yeah, the thing with the redwoods, you have to be really selective where you lay them. The flatter, the better, just because they're they're so brittle. I see you got the bark shaved. Why, why'd you shave the bark? You shaved the bark for a few different reasons. We got a 42 inch bar on this saw. This tree's over 42 <laughs> inches and the bark added to it probably was over 60 inches with the bark on it. The bark's maybe five to six inches thick. You can see it here. I mean, that's how much we shaved off to get to the meat. So that means we're gonna get more bark clearance. Also the fiber, which we've been talking about all week, um, this stuff is really super fibrous and it will actually pinch your saw in a 3 8 chain. This 3 8 chain is near the end of its life for redwood. It's, it's over halfway and uh, so we want the best case to get the cleanest cut. Got it, okay. We'll so yeah. Start our cuts. What are you measuring there? I measure my snipe so it matches your gun. You always want your snipe to match your, your gun. If your snipe doesn't match your gun, then you just make a snipe however you want to make a snipe. When that tree closes up and hits this snipe, if the snipe's over here, that tree's going that way. If the snipe's over here, it's going that way. So if you measure off the back cut to here and you use that to start your snipe, the snipe matches the back cut or the undercut rather, and it continues on the original path that you wanted that tree, follows your gun. Okay, so you just measured a certain amount of inches and then just did the same Whatever measurement over here? Is satisfactory to get this thing off. Got it. <laughs> tree as much time on the stump as possible to close up so it's it's halfway down for I lose control or the tree loses its gun basically once it's snapped off the hinge wood it's on a path of its own so I want to get it as close to the path I want it on as it's going to go on and that's also why I match the snipe to the undercut so it's measured perfect distance from here to over there that way when this part of the tree sets down on here it can't go either way it's on this again just like it would be on a normal conventional humboldt that most people do today and this is what the old timers figured out they had to do yeah they would block it out like this how do you determine anton from your holding wood to where you start your snipe at is it i just pick like you're falling a tree it's either a third to half of your undercut just like you would do yep. your undercut to the tree does that make sense a third of your undercut a third of your undercut to half your undercut it depends okay. if you want the tree off faster you can come back further if you need the tree to jump further you can do it different ways there's other things that people and tricks that you can do some guys will make their undercut if they want to jump the tree five feet they make their snipe a little less steep 
and then they'll cut oak limbs or redwood limbs that are two inches in diameter and they'll lay them on here, three or four of them, so that when this tree does hit and it breaks the holding wood, it slides down that snipe. To get the butt on the ground faster. To get the faster. butt on the ground faster. Okay. Why do you gotta get the butt on the ground first? You wanna get the butt on the ground on redwood in particular, because these things are a big feather, right? If the top, they're going fast, and if the top hits first, they're so brittle, it'll look like a train wreck. It'll just be box cars all over the hill. So if you get the butt down first, it sits down, and then the weight of the tree, which is the butt's the heaviest, slows down, it's less likely to break. It's, you know, you're gonna lose nothing in the valuable part of the tree. If it does break, it's gonna break at the top. If well, what top to hit the ground first and the butt still hung up, it's gonna break at the butt. What would happen if you just came up to this tree and did a conventional face cut in a it? A conventional face cut as like we've been doing? No, like like, like what most people cut. East? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, first off, the mill would get really pissed off at us uh, because this is super valuable wood. And so they don't want to waste any wood. They're, they're super critical on uh, stump heights, which everybody in the east thinks that our stumps are higher, but I don't see how you're gonna get this one any lower even with a conventional. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're like, um, But they want the waste out of the stump. They don't want the waste out of the log. They'll make yeah. more boards this way. You and will it, will it land more aggressively with a conventional notch It would too? land more aggressively for sure. Um, I don't know how they do it back east. If they do snipes on their stumps as well, I don't know. Very cool. Yeah, we de demonstrated this in a video. I, I did one with Jed, you know, the, the eight ways to fill a tree video. He called this a gap face. He did this on like a tree half the diameter. Cool. So, so now what, you ready for the back? How are you going to do this back cut? You can't even. It's going to be blind. I'm going to, I'm going to wheel a little bit more on that side to see if I can get a gap over there. Yeah. Look at this trunk. He's got no, he's got to stick a saw in there, but that's the. That, that's a hard cut. The top of that tree's bent ahead 15 feet probably. Wow, so this is starting to go and it's just tangled in yeah, this one? Yeah, this one, I mean, I can, I can stick my hand in the back cut. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the problem. We've got enough wood sawed, everything's sawed right. The problem is, is this little tree is little. married to the top one. <laughs> Yeah, it worked, man. That log looks like it's in great shape. Yeah, it saved out. We had a little wood on this corner, which I was worried about when we were cutting the tree. I had to stick back in here. You'll see the, the curves from my saw right here. And I got some of this um, while the tree was still standing, but I was worried. But you just couldn't see that. Yeah, well, again, 42 inch bar, right? And when we came across this corner and we saw it over here, I stopped early. I believe that there was a massive tree up there. I think it was limb locked. Good, Great job. And let's say do a traditional Humboldt.